We are Sorted, a group of mates from London exploring the newest and best in the world of food whilst trying to have a few laughs along the way. <laughs> we've got chefs, we've got normals, and a whole world of stuff for you to explore, but everything we do starts with you. Hi everyone, I'm Mike, this is Baz, welcome to Fridge Camp. Today our chefs Ben and James go head to head in an ultimate Chinese food battle. We've teamed up with Lee Kum Ki who make authentic Chinese sauces. They've sent us a whole load of stuff to play with. One of which is their original oyster sauce. Oyster sauce is a rich and savoury condiment that's essential within Chinese cuisine because of its delicious umami flavour. But where did it come from? Let me take you on a journey back to 1888, where a restaurateur named Mr. Lee from southern China was boiling a pot of fresh oyster soup. After forgetting about it, he returned to realise the soup has simmered down into a thick gravy with an irresistible new flavour. Mm. Mr. Lee proudly named his creation Oyster Sauce and has been selling it under the brand Lee Kum Ki ever since. So chefs, equipped with that knowledge, you now have 90 minutes to cook up an amazing Chinese dish. And we've even brought in a special guest judge to help taste. He was the only one left. Three, two, one, cook! I'm doing four dishes because it's kind of a feast of delicious Chinese flavours that you put in the centre of the table and share. So I've got a clay pot style rice, I've got a sesame stir fried wok vegetable dish, I've got an amazing beer fish dish and a snoozing dragon. What's a snoozing dragon? I'll show you later. Ben's doing sim four simple dishes. I'm doing one slightly, maybe slightly more complicated, but not overly complicated dish. Okay. It's a Szechuan hot pot broth, a traditional dish, but I'm putting it with slow cooked char siu pork, which is definitely not traditional to put the two together. So the first thing I've done is get my pork on. It needs to be in a pressure cooker because I don't have time to slow cook it in the oven for three hours or so. So I've put a broth of orange juice, uh, soy sauce, oyster sauce and char siu sauce uh, into a pressure cooker with some star anise and a little bit of water just to kind of almost cover the pork. I'm going to put that on for about 40 minutes and the pork should be really, really tender by then and then I'm gonna reduce the sauce down to be nice and sticky. You are right, James? James, I've, I've somehow stuck the... <laughs> I've got it stuck. No pressure, mate. <laughs> this could be awful. <laughs> if you can't get that off with those guns, then no one in this office can. The real question is in 90 minutes, not only can he cook pork belly, can he get round the corner to a shop to buy a new pressure cooker, get back and still cook pork belly? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Yes. Come on, come on. Disappointing. The battle is back on. For me, it's lots and lots of veg prep up front because most of my dishes, if not all of them, cook super quickly at the end. So I just need to get everything ready. And it's clever because where I'm using half a red pepper in one dish, I'm using half in the other dish. So they kind of mix and match. Peppers, mushrooms, cabbage, courgette, spring onions, ginger, tomato, it all needs prepping. This was one of the most interesting meals I had when I was away, partly because we cooked some of the dishes in a cookery school when I was there. And secondly, the snoozing dragon, I just think is really, really cool and interesting. So much so that the second night I had to ask if I could go into the kitchen and watch them make it. And he still hasn't told anyone here what a snoozing dragon is yet. We'll build to that. For my broth, I have fried Szechuan chili pepper and Szechuan chili flakes in lard. And then I fried spring onion and ginger in sesame wok oil. What is wok oil? <laughs> you can't use sesame oil to oh, actually like cook stuff in because it burns. This is sesame flavour, but it's good for cooking with. Added some five spice powder, cumin seeds, cardamom pods, some chili garlic sauce, black bean garlic sauce, and then I've added chicken stock, Shaoxing rice wine, caster sugar and porcini mushrooms, and then I've poured in the Szechuan chili flakes and Szechuan pepper that I fried in the lard, along with the lard, into the broth, simmered it for 10 minutes, and then steeped it for 45 minutes. So why are you going to win? Do you know what? I, I, I don't know that much about Chinese food. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to admit it. Yeah. So what I'm doing is taking two things that I think look absolutely delicious and putting them together into something that I think is better than the two when they're combined. Whilst Ben is taking tradition and doing a little bit of a twist on some dishes, you seem to be taking tradition and throwing it out of the window. So I'm going to cut all the way along the aubergine at 45 degrees, 
about 80% of the way through. That is a Hasselback aubergine. It's a Hasselback aubergine. You roll it over 180 and you cut through this side, square onto the board, 80%. Oh no, that might have been a bit deep, that one. Ooh. And what you get is a concertina long thin aubergine. Of aubergine. Is it a little bit style over substance though? <laughs> when you built it up, I was skeptical that I'd be even interested. <laughs> but I am actually fascinated by that. And then basically you get the cornflour, so you get crisp bits sort of all in, seasoning all in, because it's quite heavily seasoned cornflour. Oh no, the tail's come off! No, well that's, see, that's a tester. That's just to test in the oil, see if it's hot. No. Sure? Yeah. Sure. Boys, you have one hour left. So a generous teaspoon of oyster and about a tablespoon of soy in with the cornstarch, mix it up into a paste, and that becomes the thing that we add into the pork and the pepper and the mushroom and all the other wonderful flavours later on to thicken it, to season it, and that will just ooze over our snoozing dragon. How do you know what's good oyster sauce? It's thick, it's shiny, it's, it's gloopy. You, you want to look for one that's got fresh oyster extract in it. And therefore, when it gets reduced down into this, it's just got all of the, the fifth sense, the fifth taste. Umams. Umams. This is my clay pot. Clay pot style rice. Yes. Everything he says has an asterisk attached. So in there, we've got washed and drained jasmine rice, shiitake mushrooms, vegetable stocks, a little bit of Chinese rice wine in a wok with a lid, and then you cook it. You bring it up to a very, very gentle simmer. You cook it on the lowest heat possible for about eight, 10 minutes, and then you take it off the heat, but leave the lid on for another five, six, seven, eight minutes. And it should steam in all of its lovely juices, absorption method, it should be okay. <laughs> Dragon, in. Come apart, come apart, come apart, come apart, come apart. Oh, that's fine, shame, that is a shame. <laughs> what, you were hoping that's gonna break apart? I mean, that's the most complicated part of your dish. Boys, you are halfway through your time. You have 45 minutes remaining. Ooh. Double tong method. And it's safe. Oh, that was so boring. The dragon is safe. Is using all of these sauces cheating? The, these have been, like, perfected. I've ne I would never try and make my own oyster sauce. So proper Cheer. Chinese chefs would use sauces yeah. like this? Yeah. These are just amazing condiments and sauces. You then, notice how many different things, even though we're using the same soy, oyster, sesame, four dishes will all be very different. Oh no. Oh, ben, is that okay? No, that's ben, is not that okay. okay. I've used half of my chassis sauce in the broth. Now I'm gonna brush the pork with the rest of it. And then I'm gonna just glaze it over a kind of oh, low wow. to medium heat. So the key here is to fry off the pork mince in a little bit of the sesame wok oil. Now, you don't actually have to add pork mince. You could keep this whole dish vegetarian by leaving out the pork mince because there's so many other amazing flavours to go with the snoozing dragon, in which case you can use a vegetarian stir fry sauce. I can't hear my sizzling over your sizzling. My sizzling's louder than yours. I'm adding a little bit of chilli oil here. I put a tiny bit of wok oil in this. Right, we're into the last 30 minutes. Take the pork out of the wok, put it on a plate, and then into the same hot wok with another little bit of the sesame wok oil. We're going in with the chopped peppers, mushroom, and garlic. Add the pork back in around the peppers and mushrooms, along with a splash of water, your oyster, soy, and cornstarch mix, and then heat it to a bubble. It will thicken it and cook it for a couple of minutes. That's gonna get poured over our snoozing dragon. It looks and it smells exactly like proper Chinese restaurant food. And you can't smell it anymore. When we say Chinese food, we just think it's one. It's quite a big place though. And yeah, the re different so regions hard. are yeah. so, so different. That's probably why I'm not allowed to put these two together. <laughs> that is absolutely why. <coughs> That's rude. Oh. That, is, no, that is rude. That was a good cough. Very rude. 25 minutes remaining. This is the pork cooking liquid and it's gonna go straight in there. This has got the oyster sauce and soy sauce in as well. So this is when char siu and Sichuan they meet. meet. They meet. And Ben doesn't think it's going to work. Do you think it's going to work? I think I think it's going to work, yeah. Are you sure they're going to pair together? Yes. Oh! Cause that, cause oh! That Dragon is no longer snoozing. <laughs> it is woke. It is woke. <laughs>
And that's where the battle was either won or lost. It's in. It's in. It's in. We're done. We're done. For my beer fish dish, which is in this case cod, I've deliberately left skin on cod. I'm going to dry the skin and then fry it in the wok with a little bit of the oil skin side down. What are you using, cod? Yeah, so I had a firm white fish when I had it in Yangshou. But basically you want something firm, so you could use hake, you could use monkfish, you could even use prawns, because all those white fish have kind of like a, a meaty sweetness to them, which will work with the lager and the ginger. So we're not cooking the fish all the way through, we're just looking for that kind of colour. Whatever comes out of Ben's pan, he'll tell you that that's what he's looking for. More of that magic combination of oyster and soy. This is beer. Lager. Thank you. I have, I have smelt beer before. <laughs> <laughs> Into the wok, ginger, pepper and tomato. Stir fry for a couple of minutes, then add in the beer and your oyster soy mixture. It's not fishy. It's just delishy. Oh. So what I'm going to do now is poach the mushrooms and the bok choy. I'm literally just going to give the bok choy maybe 30 seconds to a minute, and then I'm ready to go. Now the beer's reduced down, I'm going to add the spring onions so they steam and have a slight crunch to them and the fish back on top to poach in that liquid. My final wok is smoking, so I'm going to go in with the last of the sesame wok oil, and then it's going to be courgette for a head start because they're going to cook a little bit quicker, or take a bit longer rather than the cabbage. Cabbage, spring onion, garlic, and it's finished right at the end with a splash of soy for seasoning, and some sesame seeds for crunch. I can see how this is going to come together to be a really great dip. If it's worked, the rice should absorb all of that stock and the shiitake flavour. We'll finish it with sweet soy and some finely sliced spring onions. One minute left. 20 seconds left. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Step away from the kitchen. I am happy with that. I am not sure Barry will be happy with that, but we shall see. <laughs> I think it looks fresh and vibrant and inviting. I'm, I'm chuffed. <laughs> Barry, you're going to start to your right hand side, that's that side. Mm -hmm. uh, you. you have a snoozing dragon. A beautiful warmth and it's really like playing with all the textures as well. You've got a crunchy yet very soft and gooey aubergine. A beer fish. <laughs> the fish is beautiful but I think my favourite bit about that is the broth. Oh, it has a really nice tang to it yeah. actually from the bit. It's really fragrant and fresh flavours. Sesame wok fried veg. Simple. It's simple. The charring is where all the flavours coming from there. And clay pot style rice. Four outstanding dishes. This has this has got a lot to do, in it. This is Sichuan hot pot broth and slow cooked char siu pork belly. Dive in. No, I want to watch you first. Mm. That is so sweet and charred. And oh, there it is. It's one of those spices that it warms you, doesn't ever hurt you. It's like a, it's a hug. And with the freshness of the bok and the mushroom, it's got that depth as well. I want it. I want to try this one. That is delicious. Oh, I really like that mixture of hot and sweet. Five plates of food that I wouldn't expect from two Westerners. Yeah, like, they are yeah. completely agree. All right, mate, you're going to have to make a decision. Which set of dishes is your favourite? The winning dish has to be the sleeping dragon. It was my snoozing dragon. I'm glad you oh. enjoyed it. Oh. Wow, OK. Well played, Evers. Well, you've heard from our expert judge, Barry, but we're sure there are plenty of other experts out there who might know more. We would love to hear from you. Comment down below. Let us know which chef do you think should have won. I know you can't taste it. I know you can't smell it, but you can see it. You've seen the process they've been through and how they've been described. Who's your winner? Well, good job. Well done. Quite the feast. 
Yeah, so Ben's dish won it for me today, but who do you think should have won? Comment down below and let us know. Also, give the video a like and a massive thanks to Lee Kum Key for getting involved. If you want to know more about them, you can check them out in the links below. And they're helping us host an amazing competition over on Instagram. So go and follow us and them on there. Also, links down below to find out all you need to know. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Goodbye. As we mentioned, we don't just make top quality YouTube videos. No. We've built the Sorted Club, where we use the best things we've learned to create stuff that's hopefully interesting and useful to other food lovers. Check it out if you're interested. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in a few days. Oh God, I'm so sorry, but it's building up. I have to. <laughs> sorry, I oh, God, that was worse than I thought it was going to be. <laughs>